So as we can see, the reaction order is very important to know, right? We have to know what happens when I double, triple, or half the concentration of something. What's going to happen to the rate of the reaction? And so how do we find this uh, rate order? Uh, so what we have to do is we have to do it experimentally. Right. You can't just look at the equation and say this is the rate order. So the number one experiment to do this is what's known as the method of initial rates. And so put a little star next to it. It's going to be a very important topic. You need to be very uh, comfortable with the method of initial rates. And so the way the method of initial rates works is that you measure your initial rate. Then you change the concentration. And then you me remeasure the initial rate. And then you figure out what happens, or see what happens. Say you double the concentrations, what happens to the initial rate? Does it double, does it triple, does it half? What does it do? So let's take a look at an example. So here we have NO2 reacting with carbon monoxide to form NO plus carbon dioxide. And so uh, obviously we're not gonna be doing a whole bunch of experiments, so you'll be given data from stuff, right? So we'll do three trials, trial one, trial two, and trial three. And then what we'll do is we'll change the concentration of NO2 and CO to determine what that does to the rate. So your NO and CO, or NO2 and CO2 are in concentration of molarity, and then your rate is molarity per second. So let's say initially we had 1.10 in this one, then 0.2, then 0.2 again, and then 0 0.10, and then 0 0.10, and then 0 0.20, right? So you, you're doing all these trials, you set them up with these different concentrations, and then you measure the rates. And then this is what you get. So there you go, you've, you've been given your data or you found your data yourself, and now we need to write out our rate order and figure out what our exponents are. So we know rate is equal to K times the concentration of our reactants, in this case NO2, to some exponent that we're gonna figure out, times the concentration of carbon monoxide to some other exponent that we're gonna figure out. And so we have to figure out these exponents individually. And so to do this, to solve for M, we want to compare two trials where NO2 changes, the concentration of NO2 changes, but the concentration of CO does not. Think about it logically and experimentally. If you wanna determine what effect some cause is having, you wanna only change one variable. You only wanna change one thing. If you change multiple things, you can't tell which factor contributed to that change. And so let's write this down. So to solve for M, compare two trials where NO, the concentration of NO2 changes, but the concentration of carbon monoxide does not, does not, right? So look at your two trials. We can see in trial one, and trial two, we have doubled the concentration of carbon monoxide or NO2, but we have not changed CO. So we could use trials one and three. If you try to use trials one or trials one and two, you can use trials one and two. If you try to use trials one and three, you can see that we changed both of the concentrations. And so you don't know which one is causing that effect. So again, only change one variable at a time. And in this case, it's gonna be trial one and two. So in this case, let's see. So I'm gonna show you some long ways to do this um, so you can kind of see all the math and logic behind it. And then later on, we'll kind of learn some shortcuts uh, of how to kind of speed this process up a bit. So what we do is you take one rate law and then divide it by the other to see the change. So you take the rate of trial one and then divide it by the rate of trial two, right? These are both gonna be equal to K 
times the concentration of NO2 to some exponent times the concentration of carbon monoxide to some exponent, right? And let's take a look at some of the things that occur. We have K over K. Well, you know from basic math that these two will cancel out. And then we kept these the exact same, right? In both cases, the value of this CO is 0.1 and the value of this CO is 0.1 because we picked a trial in which these two do not change. And so since they're the same and they're divided by one another, they cancel out. And so what we end up getting is the rate of one over the rate of two is only dependent on our change in NO. So now what we do is we take our point one, plug it in for our trial one, and our point two and plug it in for our trial two. So let's see, trial one's point one. Divided by point two. And then we pull the rates as well. The rate in trial one was 0 0.0021. So the rate of trial one over here was 0 0.0021. And then we look at our rate at trial two. It's this 0 0.0082. And now we can do some math, right? So um, the math is a little bit tricky here. So let's, let's take a look at some properties that we're allowed to use. So if we have a thing that says A to the X divided by B to the X, that is the same as A over B to the X. And so we can say 0 0.021 over 0 0.0082 is equal to 0 0.1 divided by 0.2 to the M, right? We've used one mathematical property. And then we can further reduce this. We can type in our calculator 0 0.0021 divided by 0 0.0082, or just think about it in your head. This is equal to 1 fourth. And then 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.2 is just equal to 1 half. So we can make that um, simpler here. And so now there's, at this point, there's two ways to go about this. Uh, the number one way is, is depending on how good your math is, is to just think. So uh, it, it really, this really depends on how good your math is, right? So one half to what power is equal to one fourth? Um, if you're able to do this in your head, that's totally fine. It's two, right? One half squared, one half times one half is one fourth. So you know the value for M is two. Um, it won't always be a whole nice number. And, you know, some of you, it, it's totally fine if you can't do that in your head. That, that's no problem. It's not a math class. We can do the math instead. And so now we have to think about how the heck do we solve for an exponent, right? It's, it's, it's kind of a little bit tricky. We need to solve for M. That's what we want to solve for. How do we do that? Well, the trick here is to take the log of both sides. So we're going to take the log of both sides sides. So we'll have log of one fourth is equal to the log of one half to the m. And the reason we did this is because of a mathematical property of logs. And what this mathematical property says is that the log of a to the x is equal to x log of a. So what this allows us to do is it allows us to take this m and move it up front. And that's totally A-OK. -okay. That's a mathematical property. That is definitely something you are allowed to do. Right, now we've got our M out in front. And now to solve for this one, we simply divide both sides by log of 1 half. So we'll have log of 1 fourth divided by log of 1 half. And you can just go ahead, type in your calculator, and you'll get M is equal to 2, right? So you've solved it. And um, you see it's the same thing logically. You get to the same conclusion either way. So what we can say here is that um, the reaction is second order in NO2. Cool, cool, cool. So 
we've solved our, let's go way back up here. We've solved our M. Now we need to solve our N. We need to solve our N. For N, we want to pick a trial where the change in concentration of carbon monoxide is different, but NO2 does not. Again, we only want to mess with one variable at a time. And so you can see in trial two and three, the concentration of carbon monoxide is doubled, but the concentration of NO2 is constant. So let's go ahead, just scroll down all the way down here and just write this down. So to solve for N, pick a trial where the concentration of carbon monoxide changes, but the concentration of NO2 does not. And so as we've identified, that is trials two and three. And so we're gonna do the same thing, right? We're gonna say try rate two divided by rate three. Say this is K NO2 to the M. Actually, now we know it's a two, so we can just plug in the two, it doesn't really matter. Uh, CO to some exponent divided by K NO2 squared CO to some exponent, right? And now we can say these Ks will cancel out because they're the same thing. Our concentration of NO2 has not changed, so they'll cancel out, be the same thing. Then we get rate of two is divided by rate of three is equal to CO over time or to the exponent of N divided by CO to the exponent of N. And then we need to take our numbers from our data and plug them in, right? Here's our concentration at um, rate two, our concentration at rate three, and then our rate at rate two, and then our rate at rate three. So what you end up getting is 0 0.082 divided by 0 0.083 over times 0.1 over 0.2. And then I'm just going to you know, quickly do that math property there to get that exponent on the other side. And so we can see these two are essentially the same number. Uh, they're, they're slightly different, but it's a sig fig thing so that they're essentially the same number. Um, if you get an answer that's like you know, 0.99, it's close enough to one. You can just call it one. So we get one equals one half to the n. And so you can think about it logically, right? What n or one half to what power is equal to one? Well, remember that any number to the zeroth power is equal to one. And so we can just say n is equal to zero here. But if you don't like that, that's totally fine. We can do that the math way as well. So again, in this math way, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the log of both sides. So the log of one is equal to the log of one half to the N. Then we are allowed to take this N and put it up front. So log of one is equal to N log of one half. And then we divide both sides by log of one half. And so that becomes log of one over log of one half, and so then n is equal to zero if you go ahead and plug that into your calculator. And so we can say that this reaction is zero order in, uh, was it, carbon monoxide, right? So it doesn't matter what you do to the concentration of carbon monoxide, your reaction rate is not going to change. And so we can write, then write an overall rate law. So we can say that rate is equal to K times the concentration of NO2 squared. And then we don't have to put the CO because uh, it's to the zeroth power, so it's just one. And so then final step here, yep, there is one more step indeed, um, is how to solve for N or K. how to solve for K. And so it's pretty simple. You can just plug in any numbers from any trial or plug in numbers from any trial and solve for K. 
The only caveat here is that you have to use the numbers from the same trial, right? So let's go back up to our data. So you can use all of these numbers from trial one, that's totally fine. You can use all of these numbers from trial two, that's totally fine. You can use all the numbers from trial three, that's totally fine. You are not allowed to mix and match. You cannot mix and match. So you can use any trial, but you have to pull them all from the same trial. I'm lazy, so I always just pick the first one because it's the first one. And so then we just plug in these numbers here. So we have rate of one equals K N O two squared. And so our rate in trial one was 0 0.0021 equals K times this N O two, which was a concentration of 0.1 squared. And then you just solve by K for K by dividing both sides by 0.1 squared. And let's actually take a step back and think about the units. The units of our rate is molarity per second. The units of our concentration was molarity. If we go back up to our table, we can see that, right? Molarity per second, molarity. Back up here. So then this is molarity per second. This is molarity. and But then it gets squared, so 0 0.00. 21 molarity per second over uh, so this is 0 0.01 molarity squared and so this squared is going to cancel out with this molarity and then we'll have a value of k of 0 0.21 molarity inverse seconds inverse remember anything any number to the negative one is equal to one over itself right so when you raise something to the negative one power, it's just one over itself. So that's how we write that. One last note is that the units of K will vary and the units of K will be whatever they need to be for the other units to work out. And so here's kind of uh, just a table that shows you the units of K for different overall reaction orders. And so then the last thing <laughs> we can do is write the overall rate law. Now that we have all of this stuff and we can say that this rate is equal to K, but now we know the value of K, it's 0.21 per molar second. times the concentration of NO2 squared. And this right here is our final answer. So uh, next up, I'll show you a somewhat quicker way to work through this because as you can see, it's quite long.